Thank you all. Um, it's good to be here. As a, as a two, one, a recovering academic, and I used to be a professor, and as a, uh, a, a new to the concrete world, newish to the concrete world and whatnot, I'm, I'm, I used to be mainly a steel person when I was doing that. I'm having a lot of fun here, and I'm presenting on something that'll just kind of help ground um, us and as we talk about all these different new methods and materials and whatnot that you're seeing throughout this presentation. So I promise there will be uh, no, no fancy tables or equations here today. This is going to just be a, a, a great idea for uh, uh, you all to listen and see how WJE or, or engineers think about punching related deficiencies and how we can go about repairing them effectively um, and, and just thinking through the process, right? And it helps you. I, I think it's actually just a great opportunity to think about how novel systems and novel things can, and analyses can be further used, all right? So uh, really quick photos here, just uh, FYI, this photo here is actually a piece of the punch column, a uh, punch piece of slab from Champlain Towers, the Surfside Collapse. So that's from that NIST evidence facility right there. I'll show a couple more photos, um, but, but I'll talk a, a, a bit about that for a second. All right, so you're going to have to imagine sometimes here, uh, unfortunately. Um, this one, not too much to imagine, but, but let's just remember some of the benefits, why we like, uh, all right, that's better. Yeah, okay. Why we like flat plate construction, why it's important to keep, keep working on this, right? Um, it's economical, right? Lightly loaded, no beams are necessary. We can get great MEP layouts, floor to floor heights are awesome. Uh, in the steel world, they, they dream of having a system as good as PT flat plate construction, right? And we're not going to really focus on PT, but it's, it's just a really great method for construction. Um, it's highly optimized, right? We are working in a design world, right, where deflections are controlling often in flat plate construction, right? And that's a whole different topic, not, not discussed here today. And then the, the capacity at the beam column joint or this punching shear capacity becomes quite important, right? Uh, sensitive to, but it is sensitive to different uh, issues, right? And one is, especially on the construction related side, we always, like, not always, but often, very often see uh, low top reinforcement, where people have stepped on the reinforcement, it's pushed low, so you do need good construction control. Um, thankfully, major issues that we've seen and documented um, at WJE and just in the literature uh, are often a combination of many factors, so that's a good thing. Let's talk, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, there's many well-documented failures that we can talk about. Uh, and, and thankfully, what we're going to talk about later is not usually these catastrophic failures, uh, but they are issues related to uh, uh, deficiencies that we're, we were able to correct. Uh, but let's talk about a couple failures, namely uh, the Surfside Collapse and the Harbor K, both, uh, unfortunately, in Florida, where I live. Um, these things are important. This Harbor K collapse changed how Florida runs construction. Florida is special in how we have inspections and whatnot, and all stems from this Harbor K collapse in 1981, right? And what's interesting is Champlain Towers, the Surfside collapse, was the same year, built the same year, lasted 40 years, different issues there, but so they're contemporary buildings. Uh, 11 people died, flat plate construction failure, uh, uh, punching shear failure. Um, it turns out engineer, uh, misdesigned or, or really didn't design for punching shear, unfortunately. Um, and on top of that, they made matters worse by getting all the reinforcement placed low, right? So uh, bad construction controls. Um, there was, it, it's changed how we inspect shoring. It's changed how we inspect buildings. Uh, it makes construction very odd in Florida and confuses many engineers who come to Florida and work. Um, the other one, the other big one is Champlain Towers. Uh, WJE was retained by the ownership or the receivership uh, of the towers after the collapse um, and, and to investigate the collapse. 40-year-old um, building uh, lasted 40 years, different, different, different set of issues, different set of uh, uh, circumstances. 98 people got killed, unfortunately. Um, and the, the ultimate issue there was inadequate punching shear design, right? Um, and then on top of that, they had low reinforcement, and on top of that, they added load, right? So uh, uh, it, it, it is the kind of triple whammy, and then you add maybe some, some long time and corrosion, and, and we end up with an unfortunate collapse um, uh, that happened there. So how do we avoid that, right? What, what do we do when we go out there to site? And we're going to talk about some things that they, we'll, we'll show a, photo, a couple of photos that, um, for instance, they, that, that was seen on site at Champlain Towers that 
uh, from, from our Monday morning quarterback viewpoint is really simple and, and easy to kind of figure out. Um, but but <clears throat> from, from maybe when you're out there in the field for the first time, it can be quite challenging. So um, the, 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 the real uh, approach here, right, is to first get out there and look, right? And, and the challenge is a lot of times it's concealed, unfortunately. And that's the real issue. Parking garages are great because usually it's not concealed. So parking garages are the, are, we often find punching shear deficiencies in parking garages because you can see them, right? Uh, unfortunately on pool decks and things, they usually have pavers and terraces. But the idea is you get out there, first off, if there's no faulting, like if there's no differential movement of the slab, that's a good start, right? Then we're looking for shear cracking or kind of rate, or tangential cracks or, or that, that uh, go around, as well as flexural cracking, which would be the radial cracking patterns. Um, do your initial four root F prime C check. Think, is it time to shore, right? Is, or should we be thinking about shoring right away or when is the right time to shore? And that's a tough, that's a tough answer. Four root F prime C is not a predictive number, right? It is just a code equation. Um, so, and, and I think we're all being, we're all very clear about that, right? We have an AS min now in, in, in 318.19. We know that there's other theories about how to, how to handle punching uh, from the Europeans. So uh, then you have other analysis and thoughts to do, assessments to do. You know, looking at reinforcement survey, getting a GPR out there and looking at the reinforcement, looking at the cover depth, uh, sounding, looking for, you know, listening for hollow sounds, uh, measuring deflections, that can be a good indicator of a deficiency as well. Uh, analysis, even more advanced analysis, such as, you, you know, playing with shear crack theory and whatnot. Uh, load testing is always a great, if you feel like it's good, right? Not if you don't think it's good, but if you feel like it's good, load testing is a great option as well. Um, the, the one thing I, I, you know, this is a complex problem, and the one thing I, I always like to harp on when we talk about these issues is conferring with your peers relating to this, because it is complex, there's a lot of issues going on, and it's not, not as simple, unfortunately, as we all know sitting in here, uh, as for root F prime C, or, or, or some minor modifications to that, right? So, um, and then there's, but the great news is there's easy, quick, efficient ways to retrofit, and hopefully, we're, and I'll show you the old-fashioned good ways that we've done it for many years, uh, WJ. So here's a slab, in, and this one's in Brooklyn, in New York, uh, and it's a slab where a bunch of bar was placed too low, right? And so you're seeing, this is a map of the cracking on one of the levels in this warehouse. Um, Lots of flexural cracking, lots of, uh, 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 you know, spanning between the columns, but as well as radial cracking coming out from, from the columns themselves. There's also some uh, tangential cracking, so around the column itself, indicating there is some sort of shear-related deficiency um, at these columns. Um, we'll talk about how they repaired this later on, but so uh, just some of the things, that was, that's just one. It gets hard, though, right? I can tell you on the photo on the left, this was another site we went to um, at WJ, and, and I think this one's actually here in California. And we determined on this site that repair wasn't necessary. So you can see uh, uh, some nice radial cracking. You can also see kind of the crisscross pattern starting uh, as well. It's also dependent on the, shear, the, the reinforcement layout, right? And we're still talking no shear reinforcement here yet, so we're not, we're not getting that deep. Um, <clears throat> At the same time, on the, on the right, you start to have a bit wider cracking, and when we do the analysis and kind of get to the, you know, get through it all, we just determined the, the photo on the right needed to actually be repaired. So it's a challenge. It's not always, you know, apparent from when you get out there and look. The photo on the left up here shows lots of flexural cracking, lots of radial cracking uh, coming out of the column. It has shear reinforcement, hence the kind of weirder pattern, right? So the, the shear reinforcement uh, does play some games with it as well. And the photo on the left, sorry, on the left, I'm sorry, with the nice painted lines. The photo on the right um, that you have here is uh, a bunch of radial cracking. It, ultimate repair was just to seal the cracks, just due to exposure. Okay, so it's not always necessary to repair. Routing, sealing, epoxy are always good uh, alternative options um, for, for repair. Just got to think of the situation. Is the building done moving? Maybe epoxy is a good choice. If the building's not done moving, uh, sealant is an even better choice. Um, just, you know, this is from one of Matoni and his group's papers, uh, you know, thinking about as you, I thought it was, it's a really great description for thinking about what the type of cracking you're seeing, right? L low reinforcement ratios on top, you should see lots of radial cracking. Uh, think of it like a, 
uh, like a, a circus tent pole, right? That, that's what I have to imagine in my head. Um, and you start getting a lot of flexural and you get those nice radial cracks. Add more reinforcement, you start getting this nice checkerboard pattern. Add a lot of reinforcement, you get the whole thing to pop off the top, right? The cover to pop off the top. So I use that a lot. Other ways you can figure things out. If you're on a terrace in, in a, or something that you can't see the actual surface, go below, you know, assuming things are safe, right? Pour water on top. Start flooding it with water. See if you can find, you can get that water to flow through the, any shear cracks that have formed, especially if you've seen signs of that water has already flowed down these columns, right? It is, if you, it, there's more ways that, that uh, columns can show, or you can get water flowing down columns than a, than a punching shear related deficiency. But when you're putting two and two together, it, it should line up, right? And so that is a great, a great way to kind of identify this. We've seen this often. Um, and, and that is actually on the, on the right, us pouring water to, to get water to come through that shear crack. So ideas on top there. Here is actually a, a, a punching shear failure that we retrofit and, er, corrected and retrofitted. Um, this had a, a bunch of soil on the top. So this, thankfully, the soil's all been pulled back. So the load has been removed significantly. Um, when they did that, you can see all of the faulting, uh, uh, the, whole, the whole cover is popped off. And you can see we, they, we put a little inspection opening into the, to the, into the, um, the punch zone. Uh, and you can, we could found out that it had moved significantly, right? Um, and you can actually see kind of the crack, the, the separation, the movement, the differential movement between the column and the, and the, um, the slab there. Here is, uh, after we do a little chipping, integrity reinforcement works. There, there it is working very, well, working less hard because it has shoring around it but it does work. So it is, it is there and it is a real thing. Uh, remember those 1981 buildings, Champlain Towers, Harbor K, no integrity reinforcement. Okay, so here's Champlain Towers. Here's two photos of Champlain Towers, okay? Uh, this was, the, I found these photos, so we had tons of discovery items just based on what we were doing in, in, in terms of our investigation working for the building uh, afterwards. And so I'm sitting there, my wife was, I, I tell this story, my wife was very pregnant uh, at, at, when we were doing this investigation, so we'd sit around on the couch at night and I would click through photos, right? Literally just sitting there clicking through weird numbered photos, because this is what happens when you do litigation. Um, and I clicked in this photo one night on the bottom left corner here. And I said to myself, that's weird, right? And you see here, punching can manifest in many different ways. Damage can manifest in many different ways. This is the manifestation of punching that, is, that you can't see because of the pavers, but it is loading, that load is transferring into uh, or trying to transfer into the planter walls, right? And causing cracking in the planter walls and differential movement at the far end of that planter wall. What's funny is as soon as I see that photo, I start looking, I say, I've seen this photo before, but in a different time with nothing wrong. And so on top, a year before the collapse, nothing was wrong, okay? The photo on the right's from November, so a little bit between these two photos. This is a different column. This is column L13.1, right next door to this other column. Water streaming down it, right? So you're getting the picture. Punching is progressing around that tower. And that's ultimately, we talked about some of the other nuance here, but punching progresses, was progressing around this tower and moving around and, and slowly failing this system. So, uh, uh, just keep that in mind. There's, there's lots of little hints and clues here. It's not always apparent and it's challenging. Thankfully, there's a lot of easy and cheap ways to repair this. Um, and, and one of the cheapest and easiest is shear collars. WJU's been using them since the 80s, right? Working on the principle of shear friction uh, around there and, and increasing our, 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 si our column size. We use them all the time. You can see them all over. This is, this is actually a parking deck in Chicago. This is that warehouse in Brooklyn that you saw earlier that we talked about, right? So we can make them round. People don't like round. We can also make them nice and pretty, too. There's lots of different ways to skin the cat, as they say. Um, here is an old, old photo from the 80s of, of, of the idea and the, and the basics of punching-related deficiencies. Um, and, <clears throat> and you can see that the, actually the contractor didn't trust. This is actually from Gary Klein. The contractor didn't trust Gary on shear friction, so they, made him, they added a little key that you can kind of just barely make out. Um, anyways, 
the math works out. You get, it's way better than dowel action, uh, in, in essence. It, it works really well. We can make them nice and fancy. Here's that, that, uh, that repair in, in Brooklyn again. Uh, we call these uh, the kind of the seven bars. They're not number seven bars, but they look like seven. So they're the seven, uh, seven bar repair. Um, you can do other fancy things like add drop panels if you need to, right? Really help, help yourselves out. Uh, you can do post-install drop panels alone, right? And so this is a slab that had too little reinforcement, flexural reinforcement. Here's us adding epoxy, right? And then also there's the details for the drop panels. And here you can see the drop panel going in. At the same time, we're installing uh, other reinforcement. The last one I'll show you here is post-installed shear reinforcement. Uh, really doable. Uh, only problem is VC goes down to two root F prime C, so you got to overcome that as soon as you do this. But there are, there are sometimes reasons to do this. Uh, so just in summary, it's a complex issue. You all know that. Uh, you know, uh, it's a, but it, it, and, and the, the whole idea of, of that is just most, most engineers just thinking for root F prime C that it's only a sheer problem. We got to get away from that and keep educating our young people that uh, that it's not that, it's more complex, and you all know this, so that's, keep, keep, do, keep on that, that mission. Um, but in the end, I think the most important part is that retrofits are very possible, and new rotten novel retrofits would be great to see kind of in action. So I hope I gave you some ideas about how to identify and kind of ground us all in our, our future work. So thank you so much. <laughs>